Hey, welcome to the Street Sense group chat. We post daily videos to help make money stuff make sense. And we often bring up recurring themes. Like money stuff. Yes, yeah. and also the money stuff within the money stuff. Yeah, like side hustles. And yeah. food. And fashion. Yeah. Fashion. Mm. Fashion. And on. And on. Money and fashion are really tied together. It's fashion. Come on now. Sorry. Uh, money and fashion are really tied together. It's almost like when you talk about one, you talk about the other. Yeah, they kind of go together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like two fabrics sewn together to make an outfit. Indeed. Oh, and it doesn't always have to be expensive. Mm, watch this. Mm -hmm. Hey! It's payback time. Uh, what? $20 to create a November aesthetic fit. $20 for the whole outfit? Whole outfit, top, bottom, accessories, and shoes. But I'll be nice. You can use one item from your closet. And please make it something you'll actually wear. That's it. Bye! This is gonna be hard. $20 in this economy? I can afford nothing. Oh, here we go. This is more in my budget. Even these are $4. Okay, I am on a budget. It's nice. It totally matches the vibe. Like shoes is gonna be hard. <gasps> Another pair of loafers. $5. More sparkly, are they ugly? Tell me the truth. Found a belt to complete the look. One dollar. I think I nailed it. $19. Don't challenge me. I'll win. Woo! Anisha, everyone's gonna know that was a $20 outfit. Excuse me? Okay, it was $20. How are you not gonna tell everybody you know? No, that's true. <laughs> it was a good outfit. And you barely needed anything from your closet. I know, it, just the so. tank and the uh, tights, but I feel like those are staples, so we did pretty good. Yeah, okay. Question though, how much do you think was you being lucky and how much of your success was you knowing how to shop? 0% lucky. I think it was just because I went really early on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I feel Sorry. like there's always some element of luck though when you're shopping secondhand because you don't know what you're gonna run into. True, but have you heard the saying you need to be good to be lucky? And lucky to be good. True. Oh, yes. Here are my thrifting tips. Go early, bring really good energy, and don't look for a specific thing. You won't find it. <laughs> and for every one great item you find, you're gonna sift through a lot of trash. Yeah, True. one person's trash though. Well, yes, but sometimes no. Fair point. Okay, but what about when Balenciaga tried to make a fashionable trash bag? I mean, did they though? Uh, it depends on who you ask, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. What is going on here? Balenciaga debuted this high fashion trash pouch at their winter show earlier this year. According to Hypebeast, this item recently dropped with a price tag of 1,790 US dollars. It's supposedly made of calfskin, but I can't seem to find it on the Balenciaga website anywhere. At least not yet. Yes, we know this is just to create a viral moment, but it is funny how you can get this look for much less with a literal garbage bag. Like I literally have multiple. Balenciaga's creative director was even quoted as saying, I couldn't miss an opportunity to make the most expensive trash bag in the world because who doesn't love a good fashion scandal? So here's the thing. As a consumer, does this make you respect a brand more or less? The average person isn't buying Balenciaga, so why do this? That being said, I'm sitting here talking about it, and what's the saying? There's no such thing as bad publicity. These people here have all talked about the trash pouch, and it's not new for Balenciaga or other fashion brands to try and make the most unfashionable thing fashionable. I'm looking at you distressed sneakers and truly destroyed heels. I love the term high fashion trash pouch. Okay, they were so clearly <laughs> trolling though, right? Well, were they actually trying to sell the bag or just get attention? It's both, yeah. maybe? When we made the video, we weren't even sure if the bag was gonna be available for sale to the general public. I remember this, didn't you have to call Balenciaga and actually we, ask them? We did, they didn't have many answers, but now we know. Okay, oh. not that I'm gonna buy one, but please share. Are you sure? Yes. But also, well, if you are, <laughs> it is $2,250 and you can't actually get one in Canada the closest locations that are available are in New York. Oh. If you want to do that. Okay. Okay. I think I'll pass. Yeah, same here. Yeah, well, we have talked cheap fashion and now we've talked expensive fashion, but Mercedes, what about you? What you got? Well, surprise to no one, my video is all about fashion and the economy. Oh. Check it out. <laughs> Have you heard of the headline index? It's a theory that says the trending length of skirts predicts the stock market. The shorter the skirts, the stronger the economy. The longer the headline, the worse the economy. So according to what I'm seeing here, the economy should be booming. Or wait, the economy is 
confused? So is the hemline index a real thing? Uh, not really. It's more like urban legend. Economist George Taylor shared the theory in 1926. That was the flapper era. The economy was good and the skirts got a bit shorter. Then the 30s hit. It was the Great Depression and hemlines went long again. There was also the 60s. Mini skirts were in and the economy was thriving. But the hemline index has been studied and at best it shows hemlines could be an indicator of economic health, but with a time lag of about three years. So if you want to believe the hemline index, trending hemlines today could be an indicator of the economy three years ago. Or fashion is just fashion and skirt lengths really have nothing to do with the stock market. Have you heard of this? So it is an indicator, maybe, but if it is, it's years late. Yeah, yeah. you know, they brought up some good stuff in the comments. Yeah, if it was actually point. tracked by the hemline, we would see the economy go up and down at least 30 times a year. So yeah. true. There are a ton of really interesting economic indicators as like well. Like the mosquito bite indicator. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, so it says when times are tough, people spend less money taking care of their outdoor spaces and pools, so mm. more mosquitoes breed, more bites. Mm. Mm. Or like the men's underwear index. What's that? So the idea is that people buy less underwear when they're broke from 2007 to 2009. Nine, men's underwear sales went down and it may have been because of the recession. Wow, so many indicators and it's still so hard to predict where the economy is actually going. So true, we don't have time to cover them all, but we do have time to go watch some more Street Sense videos. Mm -hmm. That is fair, you can do that on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. We'll see you there. Later.